In a world of divisiveness, we bring you diversity. In a world of hate, we bring you love. In a world of fear, we inspire you to live. And now, laughing, loving, and alive with your hosts, Rain Thomas, Elmer J. Howard, and Dr. Kevin. Hello, hello. I am the Wizard of Oz. I am James Brown. And Papa's got a brand new bag. And who's that dude? Oh, 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 oh. I'm Snoopy. <laughs> Trying to get oh. my Christmas lights done. Hi, Snoopy. Oh. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. I thought you were going to blow us off. And, you know, as much as people in the show like to get blown, this is not it. Now, now. <laughs> people were asking me, are you having a show tonight? I said, yes. I'm trying to block out Christmas presents in the back. So that's why I keep moving the camera because I've covered some of them up. I have people's Christmas, people that watch it. The Christmas presents are covered up. So if you see something that looks suspect. Mm -hmm. I don't see I don't see anything that looks any more suspect than you. Oh well then there's that, but I just don't want them to see their Christmas gifts. So I've been like moving this sideways. Someone like Char who will be watching will be like, Oh, that's my Christmas gift. Ah. Uh, Donna is here. Oh, just... Donna's here, but she couldn't. She couldn't text me back three hours ago. Hi, Bailey. <laughs> complain, complain, complain. That's right. Thank you for coming, Donna. We're glad to have you here. Uh huh. We're glad that you're attending our show. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Ignore the ingrate in the desert. <laughs> wow, Elma, you're gonna just let him talk about you like that? Yeah, well, I'm doing all the, the tech stuff and handling things. I got a cat trying to jump in my lap, so. Stop handling things and pay attention. <sighs> and so having Randy, a cat jump you? in your lap. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Oh well, you know. So, I had a little. I had a, I, I had a little challenging tree issue this week. And tree. What, what happened to your iPad and your and your AirPods, Kevin? You're, you're farther away. You don't sound as as loud. I know. I was having a hard time because I was thinking that I had an update that was going to be done in time, and it wasn't. Ah. Uh, <laughs> got it. So I am back to my computer. Though, if my I mean, I don't know if my update finishes in time. If you want me to switch over. Well, if you, AirPods in. Yeah, if you put your AirPods in, you're fine. You'll just be, you'll just be farther away from the camera. There we go. Now, do I sound fabulous? No, you still sound the same. You always sound fabulous. Did it connect? Oh, fabulous but it didn't kind connect of guy. Yet. Wait a second. What's I going see. on here? I don't hear any difference. Oh, there we go. Let's try that. Fabulous! Nope. <laughs> I'm hearing you in my AirPods. Yeah, you just you. you oh, sound now Donna is texting me because we're doing a show. Now she wants to get all <laughs> warm and fuzzy. You might have to change your mic, um, Kevin, to choose my the. Mic. Yeah, if you go under on on cam mic on Streamyard, you can choose which mic it's using. Under okay. The, uh, okay. Cam <laughs> mic. H time camera built in camera audio AirPods it says on the audio it's on your AirPods okay I don't know why yeah. we're it. for the mic yeah it doesn't sound any better and usually this is me you have to help through <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 it was all set when I looked at it it said it was <laughs> on AirPods so so, so you're having now. a you said you're having a tree issue I had a little bit of a tree issue. So, Rain, you've never been to my place, but Elmer has, and we put the tree on the room that I added on, or I turned from a, a, a three-season porch into a full room, and uh, it slants. It comes from the house, because originally it was just a porch. And so, last year we got a tree, 
and I thought we got a big enough tree. But the tree didn't quite go to the top, and it was okay, but I was like, this year I want to get a tree that goes to the top. And we have it in the corner, the furthest corner. So Jeff and I go out looking for a tree day after Thanksgiving. We find this beautiful tree. Now, last year's tree, I think, was seven feet. And it was close, but it wasn't quite it wasn't quite where I wanted it. Well, we brought this one in, and I don't know, you know, what's a, what's a couple of feet between friends? Because I think this is a 10 mm -hmm. or 10 and a 9 or 10 foot tree. Because <laughs> this yeah. one wouldn't set up in that corner. Yep. So we had to put it on the wall next to the, the room, and it's kind of the tree that's eating the blue room right now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it we, will be a most nutritious tea tree. <laughs> we've had those trees before, and it's usually my fault because I go out and I put my hand up and I say to my husband, see, if it comes to my fingertips, that should be about perfect. He's like, babe, look at my fingertips. That would be too tall. And I'm like, no, I think it would come to my feet. And then we get this tree home, and all of a sudden, it's <laughs> with a lot the top off because it's too tall. I get it. That's that's definitely a tree debacle. Yes. Well, we're going to make it work. It will work. We just had to back it up against a wall, rearrange everything a week before I'm supposed to have a class in there, and I see clients. So it's just fun, fun, fun. Well, Christmas jolly. What a good way to, like, end the season, though. It's a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. So, Mark's probably like, what is going on up here? <laughs> hey, you know, it, it is what it is. So, yes, but outside of that, did you have a good Thanksgiving, Miss, 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 Miss Rain? Well, I don't know if you guys know, but we don't celebrate Thanksgiving because I've always believed that every day that you get to have something to eat and fellowship with friends is Thanksgiving. So, um I don't, we don't really do that. We have Chinese food or pizza, whichever one we have for Thanksgiving, we have the other for Christmas. So um, Chinese food went out this year and it was relaxing and beautiful. And I actually, I got a couple of gigs that I really want to tell you about, but I can't because I have to sign the deal first. You know how that goes. But by the next show, you'll know way before the next show. Let's just say that. Okay. So but it was good. It was Yes, it's, it was good. It was peaceful. I, mean, I couldn't believe the auditions were still coming in on Thanksgiving Day. I was super grateful. Um, some things came in that I auditioned for like a year ago. So you just never know, you know, what's out there and what's going on. And um, it was good. I'm looking forward to ending this year on a bright note. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to our next year together too, the three of us. And I'm coming to see you both next year. That's a promise. I already have that on my to-do list. Well, well, you know, you're always welcome. We have room for you uh, with in the cat's room, and we have a spot saved for you uh, in the hot tub. And uh, yeah, I like we're, it. We're we're ready for you, baby. I, um, I'm ready. You know, I I did Thanksgiving. I I did the uh, right kind of Thanksgiving which was, you know, I, we do gratitude all the time around here. Sometimes I'll just stop in the middle of Jeff and I doing something and I'll just look at him and go, we just really need to be grateful for, for, for everything we have. We have a house, we have food, we have each other. We have this chaotic, crazy life, but it's a, but it's a great life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I texted my sister a couple of weeks before Thanksgiving and said, what are you doing? She goes, oh, she's having one of, one of her sons lives West Coast, one's East Coast. So she was having her local son over. She wasn't traveling this year. And I said, room for two more? And she was like, absolutely. So I got to show up, eat, hang out, see my nephews and nieces and grand nephews and grand nieces and drive around in the new car because I have the new mm -hmm. car now. It's so, beautiful. It's beautiful. And so it was a, it was a, it was a great, it was a, you know, a great, easy, kind of easy going Thanksgiving. Good. Well, we know what Elmer happened to Elmer. What's that? 
I heard my name. Twice. We both said it. <laughs> yep. Almar had a peaceful Thanksgiving as well. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> All by myself. Just sat around watching TV and playing video games. But that's good, right? <laughs> yes. I actually, I just got back from Andy's having a, our Thanksgiving dinner. So what got stuffed more, you or the turkey? Uh, the turkey didn't get stuffed because I forgot the stuffing. What? Yeah. Oh, my. Okay. Good night, ladies Talk and gentlemen. <laughs> this is Talk the Mark. I'm so sorry. I wanted to meet you, Talk but I cannot. That's, that's so I, I had one thing. Andy did everything else. I was supposed to bring the stuffing, and I left it on my counter. And I would have rerouted you right back to that stuffing <laughs> if it took you three days to get there and bring it back. You know? Wow. Uh, what can I say? I brought stuffing, actually, to my sister's Thanksgiving because I brought gluten-free because I can't eat gluten. So I did up a gluten-free stuffing with... Italian sausage in it and peppers and onions and all of this really good stuff and uh, gluten-free breadcrumbs. So I miss I miss stuffing and dressing and because you know my family made it from scratch there you know from the south and it would take like three days to do because they would ground the actual cornmeal and make it in cast. I was gonna say it was cornmeal. Yeah, yeah, corn yeah. 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 It was like the real deal. You know, my dad made all the giblets, he boiled them and seasoned them, and then we chopped them all finely. And also, I mean, it was a whole procedure that went into actual dressing. So I'm real picky about, you know, stuff you won't eat out of the box. I'd rather I, just not. Yeah, I can't, I do the, I can do the bagged cubed stuffing, you know, the, the large mm -hmm. chunks. I can't do the stovetop stuff. And, and oh, that's... no. Mm -mm. That doesn't nope. taste like anything to me. No, <laughs> no. Oh. And, I, and although on the other side, I won't eat cranberry sauce unless I see the ridges. It needs to come from a can. You know, that's so funny because <laughs> if it doesn't have the ridge, like I don't like homemade cranberry sauce because I'm used to the ridge one, the one where it's like, whoop, whoop, <laughs> yeah. and that's probably horrible, but my family didn't make that. I mean, you know, black folks, I don't know about them making cranberry sauce. I never saw that in any of my family's house. And this I'm was, just saying, they did the other stuff. This was the first year I think in a long time that I didn't make a big batch of cranberry sauce. I make cranberry really? sauce with, I love, I love making cranberry sauce and I make it with maple syrup and nuts and fresh cranberries and a little bit of, you know, um, orange. Yeah, I like the fake and... gel stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I was the big, the can, the one that goes whoop, whoop, on the plate. <laughs> you can't let it get hot because it gets like juicy. Right, and <laughs> melts. <laughs> well, when I come, I am looking for seafood because you know that's not a thing I really get to enjoy here. Yeah. I'm a huge seafood lover. Plenty it's of places for steamers. that. Steamers. Do you guys have steamers up there? Yep. You know Absolutely. with the little tail. The little a lot of people neck. don't know what those are. It's yeah. A neck. <laughs> yeah, like the gooey duck. Yeah, like the little yeah, yeah. gooey duck. And you gotta have the okay, belly. Okay, perfect. Yeah, you gotta that's, have the belly. That's my thing. Rinse the sand yeah. off, dip it in butter, down the hatch. Yeah. All right. So, what are we doing besides goofing off with uh, with Mark well, standing in the holding cell? Well, Elmer, he's your guest, so we're gonna let you introduce him, and then you're gonna have to fight back your natural loquacious ask all the questions hogging the air <laughs> as you do every podcast so that rain can have an opportunity to say something <laughs> we all know i'm the quiet one right sounds sounds good do you know mark me or kevin dr kevin no i don't i don't know mark has not had the pleasure of meeting me <laughs> i can say that twice <laughs> oh let's bring it <laughs> on without Further, I don't. What's, what, what's that sound I hear? Is that the click of him hanging up? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Mark is a, a he's got a nice bio, and I figured it's easier to just read it. Um, uh, he's a filmmaker, casting director. He has a nice body. I'm like, <laughs> I was gonna say, I was wait, like, what? he's breathing. <laughs> Mark's got a nice. Bio. <laughs> I was like, Mark is a poor guy. I read the wrong one. 
he's gonna he's gonna be redder than my shirt by the time we bring him on. <laughs> go ahead, come on, Alvo. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Snap to it. It's cool. uh, he's a, a filmmaker, on, casting director. Um, acting and media coach, podcaster, writer, digital content creator, and SAG after a performer. After living in New York for 14 years, he moved to Maine full time in 2020. Um, that's how I met him. Uh, his voice is heard on his podcast re- release date, Rewind, Clock Tower, Players Jubilee, Podcast Theater, Interact, Audio Pod- Productions, and Add This to Your List. His latest short film, Twin, is on the 2021 22 circuit. Festival circuit, while his other recent short, Family History, has wrapped its year-long festival run and will stream publicly soon. Uh, and previous short sticks can be rented on Prime or streamed on YouTube and Vimeo. They don't want to hear you purring. <laughs> the cat. Um, it's a uh, cat show. Yeah. Mark cast seven seasons of the popular hidden camera series, What Would You Do? at ABC in New York, along with other uh, TV and streaming projects at the network, as well as that independent show. films and pilots, including... Lords of Satan, and my show, Kings and Queens, recently in Maine. Uh, he worked in other on films and TV shows for over 15 years, from the broadcast series Dirty Rock and Ugly Betty, to the cable series Celebrity Ghost Stories and talk shows Live with Regis and Kelly and Wendy Williams. Uh, he taught acting, filmmaking, screenwriting, and hosting podcasting classes, both online and in person, in since 2017, and started creating digital content for the Agunquit Playhouse in spring of 2021, which Kevin's familiar with. Um, he graduated from Fordham University, he received a certificate in producing from NYU School of Professional Studies. Uh, welcome, Mark, to the show. Is, are we finally done? Gee, oh my gosh, right? Wow. Well, well that's the show, guys. Mark, thanks so. for coming. We appreciated having you. <laughs> yeah, Good can, night. I can tell everyone I do not have a nice body right now, especially after all the Thanksgiving eating, but thank you for putting that rumor out there. I'll take it. Sure. <laughs> We'll be um, the judge of that. Stand up, know. Mark. Stand yeah, up. We'll be the judge of that. Off. The proof is in the oh, pudding. Oh, boy. This is a different kind of show. Uh-oh. Yeah, it always Wait, is. <laughs> Mark, I'm going to start you Trust. off. I'm going to start you off because I know Dr. Kevin's going to grill you, but I'm going to start you off letting you know if you haven't the heard, light, I'm a shameless beggar, so you and I are going to work together in some capacity, period. Oh, yes. I am from the Bronx, born and raised. I know Fordham University very well. Totally. I went to Hofstra. Oh, yeah, nice. perfect. So, yep. Yeah, so um, you and I have lots to talk about, and um, yeah, whatever you're doing, I'm already there. Just tell oh. them, Elmer, shameless beggar. Love it. Yeah, I, Lo- I just wanted to and, get that out. Rain, I forget, where do you live? Are you in Arizona? Or I'm in Las you? Vegas. You're in Vegas. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Wow, from the Bronx to Vegas. Okay. Well, I, I, there were a lot of places in between. Yep. And uh, yeah, we're getting ready to wrap this up here in a couple of years, too. So. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Wow. Cool. So, Dr. Kevin, should I turn him over now that I've gotten my shameless begging out? And... <laughs> but let me see. We got a three hour bio right up from Alma. <laughs> <laughs> Who's also shamelessly trying to beg something from Mark, I'm sure, to do with one of his projects. Rain has already hit on you for a future casting role. So lots now, of them. Lots of them. And the cat purring. That's all and I did. <laughs> it's like being on here with a kid. And Mark, all all I want from you is for you to give us a good show. Bear your soul. Tell us some deep, dark secret you've never told anybody else. And, wow. uh, you know, we'll try to make you look good. I mean, you know, just simple <laughs> stuff. Uh, okay, great. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Typical so Sunday gotta, night. So you've got a great body and you're easy. Hey, it's a good combination. <laughs> and oh, I love well, it because well, I'm yeah. on the show. There's actually four queens in this show. I love this. There you go. Oh, okay. Can we, talk about, can, we, can we talk about quickly, Elmer, I cannot believe you forgot the stuffing. That's the best part. Yeah, oh. I know. I was rushing out of here trying to get over there. And... Oh, man. Elmer's just I... out of practice getting stuffed. That's all there is to it. <laughs> and here ah. we go with the other show with the great body again. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. I, I agree with you, Mark. So, Mark. So you appear to be doing, though the references were stronger when I was reading up on you than um, Elmer 
did in the bio, though I think I slept through the third and the fourth paragraph. <laughs> that wasn't purring, it was me snoring. Nothing personal. <laughs> um, but it seems like you do a lot of things in the LGBTQIA, LMNOZ, supercalifragilistic <laughs> community. Uh, yeah. Is that true? You know, I, I wish a lot was true. Maybe some. I hope to do more within the community. Um, still kind of navigating it in Maine. As Elmer knows, you know, it's it's pretty small uh, from what we can tell. But uh, yeah, definitely. You know, I've been working in theater and film since I was like a toddler. So any of my fellow, you know, queer community people have just been with me for decades, you know. So yeah, there's always room for more. Can't be that many decades. You don't look that old. Oh, so, thank uh, you. There's been a little more than three, three and a half. So there you go. Oh, you're just baby. a child. Baby. Oh, baby, child, child. <laughs> so, baby. Anyways, I'll burp you later. So moving right <laughs> along. Toddler, what was your first role? Oh God. You said you started as a toddler. Yeah, Were you the Charmin was... baby? No, <laughs> no, I wasn't that cute. No, um, <laughs> I th I'm pretty sure my first, the first gig I can remember, but you know, it's funny, like our memories where it's like, I don't know if I was actually there or if I just remember seeing the photos and watching the VHS tape of it. And I just think that's my memory. But um, yeah, toddler, maybe like four years old ish was um, a runway model for like Sesame Street. Uh, you know, like not even not even the real Sesame Street though. It was like Sesame clothing in like Philly, where I was from. So that was like one of my first big gigs, and I'm pretty sure I didn't even walk the full runway like I was supposed to. I think I, I don't think I got nervous. I think I was just like, you're gonna walk down there, but I'm gonna walk over here. So my mom was like, <laughs> you did not do what you needed to do. So, <laughs> but I looked good. So there you go. It was cool. So I think that was my first one. So. You, you've always been a, a bit of a uh, find-your-own-way kind of person then. You started young. Yeah, yeah. You did I it your so. way. You yeah, which, you know, probably was definitely was not always the best. But, you know, yeah, that's me. Well, I, I don't know. I, I actually think that in the long run, when someone is as close as they can do to always being them, it is the best, because when they're not being them, they're either passing at lying or failing at authenticity. Yeah. So mm -hmm. doing it your way is the way you figure out who you want to be. We have enough wannabes that are involved in theater and movies and acting, God knows. Right. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, I mean, we've got two of them just right up over my head. Right th no. Uh, <laughs> begging for roles and acts and stuff like that. that so, hey, I am not ashamed well, did, if a closed mouth doesn't get fed. Oh, totally. You don't know until you ask, right? Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm all good. I'm not going to hit you up for a role, Mark, okay? Just okay, so you know. all right. Thank you. We'll talk about some stuff I've written, though. No. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Elmer's first movie was actually something I wrote. He won't admit to it, but it was. Uh, oh. <laughs> And yeah, you're not admitting to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Quiet. He's like, what, what film? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so <laughs> you were you were doing New York. What made the move from New York to Maine? What was what was behind deciding to do the northern version of the Beverly Hillbillies? Oh, totally right. Um, so that's a great question. So my husband is from Maine. He's from Belfast, Maine, which is just a little north of Camden, you know, on the way up to Bangor and Bar Harbor. Um, mm -hmm. And 10 years ago, I started visiting Maine, loved it. Wow. It just, you know, very, I found it very inspiring. And obviously, there's so much to love. And so what is it at the end of 2021? So three and a half years ago, we bought a vacation cottage in Agunquit, Southern Maine. Um, and so, you know, we drive the four hours from where we were in New York up to Agunquit, you know, once a month and love really fell in love with Southern Maine. And then, yeah, right as things were really starting to get bad in like February, March 2020, that's when we were like, all right, we're officially moving. And so there, there you go. go. Yeah. Now, because, well, I, I grew up in Kittery. Oh, Gunquit's perfect. That's old, where I am. Yeah. Gunquit's my old stomping ground. So you actually live in Kittery. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, we live yeah. full-time in Kittery. Yeah. I love it. 
It's so it's, it was just in Portsmouth earlier today. It's like the best of all worlds is in Kittery, you know. Yep, I was just in Portsmouth today myself. I was in Kittery today. Oh, perfect! Uh, Look at you. Yeah. Where Where do you yeah. live, Doctor Kevin? I live now. in Nashua, Nashua, okay. New Hampshire. Okay. So, cool. but yeah, yeah, I had to go up and take care of some business there, and then had lunch with my sister and my niece, raiding yeah. Kittery, and you know, and then. Stopped and did a little healing work on a client, and then headed back to Nashua. So nice. I, if, where'd if you I have lunch? You were looking. Oh, the Sunrise Grill. It was like a oh, late yeah. breakfast, early lunch. Yeah. Yeah. How is that? I haven't had it yet. Um, it's not bad. I mean, it's kind of standard fare. Uh, but yeah. the food, you know, food is good. I'm a gluten free. I I can't eat gluten, yep. and so they did a great uh, Benedict with gluten free English muffins, and I, I was happy with it. Good. So, that's great. You yeah. Know, um, there's a couple of good restaurants. Now, when I grew up in Kittery, it was not the place to be or go for good restaurants, good food. You know, yeah. everybody went to Portsmouth and tried to pretend they lived there. But, you know, that was a long <laughs> yeah. time ago, long before you were born. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. So now, is your husband in the business? No, uh, only when I beg him to help me with things or like, you know, <laughs> years ago, every now and then when he'd be like in between jobs, he'd be like an extra in something I was working on or, you know, or like an art director on something. But no, he works in uh, in a, at a nonprofit based in New York, actually, but he's full time remote. So he's got a good nonprofit gig. What nonprofit is that? So he works for a nonprofit called One Love. The One yeah. Love Foundation, yeah. which yeah. You, you might have heard, yeah, it's 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 a national One Love. The headquarters are in uh, New York, but they ha they're all over West Coast, East Coast, mm -hmm. and it's all about promoting healthy relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, it was created, uh, you know, because of the the really tragic death of a young woman named Yardley Love, who was murdered by her boyfriend in in college mm -hmm. a while ago. I want to say it was maybe been ten ish years ago, probably. So, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, and that okay. was that was big national news. So uh, yeah, so he's doing that, and then he makes he makes candles. We have a candle company uh, right here, based in, at our house in Kittery. So yeah, Ooh, Busy. I love that. Now, yeah. what's, oh, yeah. what's the name of the candle company? So the candles are Nubble Light Candle Company. So that is obviously inspired by Nubble Light in in York, one of the most popular photographed lighthouses. We started it when we were, you know, actually we got he got the idea at Marginal Way in Agunquit. And mm -hmm. we were talking about like, you know, this place, and this was what, before we, you know, moved here full time. And we're like, you know, Maine is so awesome. How do we like bring something from Maine back to New York and all over the country and bring like New England home? And we were looking at the lighthouse and we're like, okay, maybe it's something to do with candles, you know, the essence of Maine and New England and bringing that light home. So it all started there. <laughs> I think that's that's interesting. I lived for almost a year up on the uh, up on that ridge. Oh yeah, within walking distance of the Nubble Lighthouse. Oh cool! Look at you. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to take my clients and we'd walk the beach. We'd do the whole session watching walking the beach yeah. um, there because I'm all about movement and fresh air and stuff like that. So oh, that's that that's good now. How are you? How involved are you with the candles? Is this more your husband's gig, or is it? It's, or is he's really he's definitely the lead. He's definitely like the the main, you know. But I I work pretty much every market with him, you know. Like I was telling Elmer, like okay, I can do this day or that day. Every other day, I'm at a market on the weekends, um, especially this time of year. Wow. Um, but I do make some of them, like you know, for our Halloween scents. I did make our wicked spooky candle, which is fun. We have fake blood in there you know red red dye that looks like blood um so yeah i make We're things every judge. now and then <laughs> yeah right i mean it's fun it smells good it smells like apples um but uh yeah so i make a few here and there but i'm more uh you know helping sell helping prep you know boxes and labeling and all that stuff you know and outreach what? i did get a few stores so there you go we're in i think we're now in 30 stores across the country wow um so the goal for 22 is more for 2022 is uh, a few more. So we'll see. So uh, are you using a traditional wax or is he gone to the soy? Oh, yeah, soy, soy all the way, baby. Okay. Soy wax. Yep. And it made with essential oil blends. 
and uh, yeah, that way it's a it's safe. It's a good clean burn. It's not your Yankee Candle, you know, dirty stuff. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, don't write us work... Yankee Candle. <laughs> I uh, sorry. I used I, to buy I... Yankee Candle all all the time. So you know, thank you, but I've just moved on. Right. So well, we'll excuse me for a second see. while I... I get Miss Morgana. From I, I'll have to look your candles up because I'm a yeah. huge candle girl and oh, I'm I love a huge that rain. New England girl. I mean, when needs to go to a gun quit. Um, oh, look, Char wants to know if you can get your candles. Char's my really good friend. Only oh, on awesome. can you get on Amazon or only on your I thirty we... We'll start buying those now. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, there is going to be a Cyber Monday deal tomorrow. Um, I forget what the percentages see that's why i'm the number two person he's the number one <laughs> but um it, yeah good question i think one of our candles is on amazon you know amazon really as you can probably tell is not great for small businesses the fees and everything right um but yeah. if you go to nebulelightcandle.com feel free to browse that's our website we're also on etsy and you can look at them all and then our cyber monday deals for uh, a select few candles a lot of our fall scents um but yeah yeah, and, and we're in uh, places from Maine to Florida, surprisingly Florida, a couple places in Florida, and like uh, our newest one is Nashville, really love New England stuff. So, you know, that's what's so yeah. cool about New England is it is more than just a place. It's a whole like state of mind. It's a whole feeling, right, that people want to experience everywhere. It's like New York, or, you know, or Beverly Hills. It's like people are drawn to these areas and kind of want them wherever they are. So that's what's cool. You know. That's right. Rub it in, because I always when thought you... I would live in Vermont or Maine or New Hampshire, yeah. and I married a guy from Virginia who somehow wanted to live here. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, well, it is not funny you... at all. <laughs> no. And as much as you shamelessly promote everything else, why don't you shamelessly promote moving back to the East Coast? I mean, it's right <laughs> up your alley. He's never going to move back to the East Coast. He's ne he didn't like it from the time he was born so that's never going to be a thing i i already told him next year i have a couple of weeks carved out i'm going to go stay in one of my favorite places in the hamptons and then i'll come see you guys and that's you too mark because a gun quits one of my favorite for the lobster roll and the trolley and the lady who killed her husband and got off that owns the restaurant oh my there. god so. that's so funny rain <laughs> so fun fact about her i guess we won't say any names even though everyone's everyone knows her um so yes yeah, she she was one of we just sold our cottage uh, a month ago, our seasonal vacation one, but she's one of our cottage neighbors. We never met her. She never went to any, you know, uh, board meetings or anything. But, uh, yeah, she just was a few houses down in her cottage. That, yeah, you don't want Lizzie Borden showing up there. So Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. But how funny, yeah. <laughs> I know everyone That's knows that funny. story, but so that, you know. now, so Mark, now that you filmed at that and you did twins there, I'm I'm disappointed you didn't tie her into your story somehow. Well, she kind of is, although I oh god, I really hope this doesn't get out. <laughs> um, but yeah, she she was part of an in of the inspiration. You know, it's a fun, scary <laughs> story, but the the past element of the film. The, the backstory at the end that's explained is sort of a little loosely inspired by what happened gotcha. with her and her husband. Yeah. So let's wow. find out. <laughs> so she's, she's dripping through the story. Um, yeah. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I got one more question. So you said, so <laughs> I wanted to, uh, so the candles, you do a lot of essential oils, you do a mm -hmm. lot of blending for your own scents and stuff like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do you, because I, I work with aromatherapies and essential oils in my oh, practice. Nice. Yeah. And so do you ever does, well, probably your husband, um, does he ever do any kind of like healing blends as well? Or is there more, or is it more like scent blends? Yeah, it's more scent. I don't think he's really dabbled in uh, much of the healing stuff. Although I love hearing that because, you know, I've always been into, um, you know, uh, Wiccan books and like, you know, in, into witchcraft and stuff. And a film that I worked on years ago in New York, it was called Enchantments. And it, we actually shot in this famous store, Enchantments. And it was really cool seeing real witches that worked there make candles and add in healing ointments and 
and aromatherapy and stuff and it would smell amazing so it's so funny hearing you say that uh we don't do that but i've seen people you know use those oils and you know this means this and you know that was cool to see in person yeah but no yeah. we're just you know the standard good smelling stuff you know i think it's like lobster from... trapper oh yeah lobster trapper yeah that is a that is a seafood odor neutralizer. So a lot of people mm -hmm. think it's going to smell like lobster or like a lobster trap. And we're like, no, no. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's like a nice citrus scent to really like trap any stinky kitchen smells, you know, from seafood to Brussels sprouts to, you know, anything curry that like lingers. It'll help freshen up your kitchen. Yeah. So some people are disappointed when we explain that to them. I'm like, no, it we're probably, not doing a lobster. <laughs> I'm sure there are some people that probably light it in other rooms in their kitchen. Um, yeah. But anyways, yeah. uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, well, my my, um, my my husband's a pagan, so. Oh, okay, great. Oh, cool. Yeah. So yeah. you guys know. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. At some point we should, we should, uh, we should cross paths for a few different reasons, but oh, yeah. back to you have a, you have a movie called twins. Now, is that your latest movie? Yeah. My latest one is twin. Yep. Um, and family history, my, my most recent, well, my second most recent um, short that Elmer helped me uh, make. And he was such a huge help in post-production. That's when we first started talking that I just released online on Vimeo for now for free. <laughs> Um, because Elmer and I were talking the last time we saw each other and we were talking about how that damn Amazon Prime <laughs> now no longer lets us put Do shorts. Oh my god. I mean you can still put it on there, you know, for rentals ish, maybe. I don't even know. I'm way I'm still waiting a month later for them to confirm it. But yeah, up until this year they you know, they were good to us indie filmmakers for putting your your content on there and you could make a little bit of money each month, but now they have stopped. So now at least Family History is free for all to watch. And then Twin, yes, is on uh, the film festival circuit until spring, and then I'll release it publicly. But yeah. So, Elmer, was it a Family History? Was was that the one you showed me that you were involved Maybe. in when you were down last? Oh no 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 that no. Um... Uh, I was involved in post production for um, for Mark. No, the the one I showed you was the the forty eight hour film challenge. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah. He didn't. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't show me yours. Just so you. Okay. Know. Oh, that's all just right. No worries. Just keep that in mind. No, 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 oh. no, no, no. You got to play this, <laughs> oh. Mark. Mark, Mark, you have to understand the dynamics here. You need to play yeah. this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you missed your cue. Oh, all right. Okay. Cut. Let's roll it again. All right. Just so you too. know. <laughs> yep. So tell us a little bit about what was the inspiration for Twins? So, you know, honestly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell it to you straight. So the, the inspiration for Twin, so like I was saying, we, we, have, we had our cottage, and at the time, we had two beds in the cottage. One was a full, and then one was a, an old twin bed that came with the cottage. It looked, I'll have to send you guys a picture. I, I mean, or you can find it online, but um, it just, it, it was a comfortable bed, but it just looked like literally like a 100 year old bed frame, like just old spooky. And so I always had this idea and everywhere I go, I'm always like, okay, what can I shoot here? Especially if it's my own location or a friend's location, like, okay, how, what can we do here? And so, you know, I had that idea for a couple of years. And then once we decided we're getting rid of that second bed to have more of a living room, because this cottage was small. This was like straight up 250 square feet, if that. I mean, it's a little seasonal cottage. And so, you know, different renters had sort of told us, oh, I wish there was more of an inside area to hang out on rainy days. And so finally we're like, yeah, you know, and also three people in a tiny cottage really lowers the price for everyone you get some crazy people in there people starting fires people doing all sorts of things so we're like okay we are couples only two people only we're getting rid of the bed and so i honestly thought okay well i have to write a short film based on this bed before i get rid of it so that is literally the reason why i made it was i'm getting rid of this i need to film it and so yeah it's it's a very straightforward fun classic horror short of a haunted bed i know it sounds silly but it it kind of works i i think it went okay you I know? Liked it. thank you 
Yeah. I'm going to see it. I, <laughs> cool. I don't know. I haven't Thank seen you. it yet, so yeah, I'll have to let you know. Yeah, the, please do. Yeah. So do you do? Are you the primary writer for most of your films? Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't gotten yet to direct um, anyone else's stuff. I almost did one time, but the funding fell through. Um, but yeah, I, I'm kind of the whole hybrid of writer, director, producer on my own stuff. Um, but I'm open, of course, to you know directing someone else's script. I think I'm just very, I've always been a writer ever since being a kid. I was like rewriting my own versions of like big movies at the time. Like I have a memory of like Twister and like casting my friends and my teachers in, in the kids version of Twister, the tornado movie, you know, and rewriting Grease and like writing my sequel to Clueless. So I've always been a writer. So that I think came first. And then it was like, well, I might as well just direct this and produce it myself, you know? especially with independent stuff, you, you kind of have to do multiple things at once, you know? Um, so yeah, so it's really just me. And then occasionally I might have a producer friend um, come in and help me, you know, but yeah, it's usually just me. So how many movies have you, have you written and put out at this point? Uh, let's see, three shorts. I'm about to shoot my next one in a couple weeks already, a few weeks. Um, so yeah, three and a half right now. Of my okay. own. Mm -hmm. And then I produced a, I was about to say a whole bunch as if like I'm some pretentious guy. No, I produced a, a good <laughs> amount of, of in, oh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> sure, I'll take it. Um, I produced, you know, a good, a good handful of, of shorts and features and pilots along the way for the last 10-ish years. So, what about yeah. that? Yeah. I, I, um, I, I was a big fan of what would you do? I have to say, I, I oh enjoyed, yeah, I, I I enjoyed the the premise of the show, though by the by the end of it, it seemed like a lot of it was getting re rehashed oh, a lot. Oh by my the end god, of it. yeah, there were some yeah. scenarios we did where literally like because I was there for six seasons, and I'm like, gosh, sometimes like oh we're doing this again already, like okay, well you know how are we gonna change it up this time? Like yeah, we were kind of grasping at straws towards the end, but. You know, it's weird, even though we were sort of running it, because we came up with all those ideas on our own, you know, uh, which you're already like making the show. It's kind of hard to also be like, OK, I'm the casting director, but then I'm also expected to like pump out some ideas every single week. It's like, you know, um, but still viewers, the ratings were still good all the way to the end. I think people it's funny. There's like even though people want new content, they're also totally fine watching the same thing just shot differently just with a different cast like it's interesting you know and, and so even how people love remakes and reboots it's and like marvel you know no offense to marvel it's fun <laughs> but it's all the same thing you know what i mean mm -hmm. so well there's a not, you know generally i should say I, I know it's different each movie you know but it's a lot of just the same stuff that we're watching with just different faces or different settings you know mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, you did do some interesting comparisons, like yeah. how down south dealt with the issue versus up north. So that was totally. a really good way to kind of actually surprise yeah. people um, in some of those things. But I think yeah. that, you know, different characters, even if it was the same basic, what would you do to have different different people because they weren't saying all the same things it wasn't like they all had lines and they memorized it and they were saying it this right. is where people's honest reactions and they really did vary from oh, from yeah. sub subject to subject so but hey you're the writer so you should have loved the fact that they were creatively tapping on you all the time <laughs> oh to totally oh yeah like many of my coworkers were like you're really sending like 12 ideas i'm like yeah <laughs> but it's funny it's fun you know it, i mean i don't want to knock too many people in this in this uh, chat but you know it was under the news division of abc which is not always the most creative of divisions so you know you would pump out your ideas but they were never good enough or whatever they didn't get it and they kind of wanted to just do the same thing or or sometimes when you had really good solid very simple like a true experiment oh well that's not exciting enough so that was kind of 
the hard thing every now and then was well, you know, it was like, well, you want ideas, here they are, you know. So leadership wasn't always, you know, great as usual. Well, you know, I find that interesting because I think that in the last five, six years, or even the last decade, that the the news departments have gotten very creative at how many different ways can it package bullshit and keep you tuning in. Totally, man, it's I hard. Mean, oh my gosh, I know. Twenty four hour ner- news cycles. Yeah. Killed the truth. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cause, yeah. Because you yeah. can't have it. What's your? What would be the dream project? If I mm. waved the wand and said, "I'll give you three point five million in funding, Ooh. run with it." What would you do? Oh wow! Thank you. I'll take it. Oh my gosh, dream project would be working on some, you know, I'm a big horror person, as Elmer knows. Elmer's like, oh, but you only write horror. I'm like, I do other things too, <laughs> but horror's just always been my go-to, you know. Um, uh, yeah, working on some, you know, reboot, remake, you know, of like I, my next film is a fan film, my first one. So that'll be interesting taking an existing property and taking you know putting my spin on it um but yeah some like big classic horror sequel i would totally be up for the challenge you know that could be really fun or of course just making you know an original feature uh of my own you know to hopefully be a new horror classic would be so cool i would like to be in your horror but i already know what happens to my people in horror (laughs) no not my you would have to rewrite my role in there i can't be falling down and getting killed off in the first like 12 minutes (laughs) i guarantee you rain will at least make it halfway through we'll see what happens oh gee that's progress (laughs) you will you will not be the opening death Sorry, Jada. You will. You will at least. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I say lead, but you never know. We can't give it away. You know. Well, right. right. There yeah. is a requirement here, Mark. If you're going to work with Rain, you have to give her this really killer dialogue, this monologue <laughs> that you have her memorize and say, so you can cut it from the final oh, edit of the film. Oh, this that's is, the worst. Oh. <laughs> How yeah, what kind of director would do that, Mark, right? Oh, my God. I yeah. Know. And oh. then ask me as soon as I get there. So you did memorize that. You, are you, do you still need time? Oh, no, I've got it because, you know, we're shooting it tomorrow and we're on a time limit. I got it. Okay, we get to tomorrow. Do you want to run through it? Nope, I got it. We do it. We do three wraps. And he says, you know, we're not even going to use that. Right, Elmer? <laughs> I didn't Wait, see that, that happened. That it was, was me. That's real? Oh, that yeah. was Elmer. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Elmer, why? No, so, yes. so we, we, we had this 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 short film, Love, Loving Martin. Right, and, okay. And that's how I met Rain. And okay. uh, she was the I only one who came. She was, in that, yeah. she was the only one that came prepared. And she and oh. this we had this really long monologue um, that she had memorized as well. Really, really was well. Was it in like the restaurant scene? Or, no, or no, no, it was at okay. the end. It was at the end okay. when she she meets him outside. It was um, really at the end. And actually, yeah. if you if you listen to my uh, my director's reel, I use her monologue as the director's the voiceover oh. for the director's reel. So oh, I did end up okay, using cool. it. But yeah. um, but so we we did the first cut of this movie, and I hated it. I said we're oh. done with trashing this. We're not doing anything with it. And then I spent four hours with a couple friends, and we went through and we chopped up the whole ending and rearranged scenes. And I had to cut mm. hers out because it didn't fit anymore. That monologue yeah. to okay. make the movie flow. So that's how it happened. It, I you know. It, yeah. yeah, she was the best actor on there because I even had a, a critic who wrote a review of the film saying, "I wish there was more of Rain." <laughs> I, was like, I know <laughs> there wow. was, but some sloppy editing got rid of it. <laughs> Get him, Doctor Kevin. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, so that's so funny. So it's not like Elmer, you had her come to set, kind of having an idea like, "All right, we're probably not even going to use this." You really were expecting to, but it just all changed. and the editing. Yeah, we had yeah. to change it. Oh man, yeah. I know. My one of my very first like big extra roles was in the movie Unbreakable because I'm, I'm from Philly and M Night Shyamalan was always in Philly all the time. And oh my god, how exciting! My first like time on a big, big, massive. This was right after The Sixth Sense, and it's all this massive seven 1970s scene at a carnival. They, the money, all completely cut. At least it was on the deleted scenes on the DVD. But I, that was when I really learned like. 
wow, there is so much money that mm-hmm. just goes to waste. I mean, uh, yeah, it's on the deleted scenes, but, you know, like, so, yeah. yeah you just, yeah, you never know, you know, I tell people, I ask about the, the filmmaking process, it's like you get, you start with the script, that changes when you're on set, and then that changes when you're in the editing room, so it's like, you know, you oh, never, God. you know, and, because sometimes, at least with me, when I film something, and then I go to the editing room, I'm like, oh, that's not what I thought it was going to look yeah. like, so, oh, you know, yeah. you have to make more changes at that point, so. Oh, totally, it's constantly changing, that's why I kind of hate editing, like, I'm okay editing something myself, you know, when it's like work I do for the Playhouse or like a social video or something. But yeah, like working with an editor and a whole post team and like seeing how it's truly coming together. Oh my God, I'm always cringing. Just because you thought you you thought you knew the movie. Then you thought the, you knew the movie again when you were shooting it. You didn't know anything. Like now <laughs> you're really, right? Yeah. Knowing what you're doing, you know, so ugh, it's stressful. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Mark, for coming to his rescue. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> no worries. Thank you, Dr. No, I... <laughs> Kevin, for coming to mine. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm I'm super. I'm sure Elmer, you are too. But when we worked on Kings and Queens, it was so much work. I mean, three full days, all these different locations. But it came out great, right? Yeah. Are you proud of it, Elmer? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've yeah. always stuff that I look and like. I wish we had done this differently. Oh, and, totally. You, know, you, you learn from it, and you know. Just like that's why I had you this time around. In the first Loving Martin, I didn't have a casting director. I didn't have an AD. Yeah. Didn't have a scripty. And I was like, yeah, that's not happening again. I need, oh, I need yeah. those people. And yeah, you you made my life so much easier, especially the casting part. You know, it was just oh, that yeah. it was so much easier having you to to run that and manage that and help me with figuring out who to who to cast and and then the, the having you as an AD on set was was very 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 helpful, especially when you know we had over thirty people on the first day on set oh my god and you wanted more elmer's like i know it's covid but i need this bar to be packed i'm like you're out of your mind you'll get like seven extras and that's all we can do you know because everyone all had available and they that's had to all be, who's interested yeah, and they had to be uh, tested they tested yeah. i was like this is the best we're gonna do so pas <laughs> uh, like i think i got in there like even with my clipboard like we'll just all move back and forth you know it was true indie that way so yeah. Mark, when you work as a casting director, do you bring your own couch or do they have to provide one? <laughs> oh my god. Eh. There's no there's no couch. I mean, there might be a couch now that we're all on Zoom, so I might see your couch, you might see mine, but no one's sitting on anyone's couch. No. No. Sitting. Or whatever. <laughs> Laying, sitting, whatever you want to do on it, it's not happening. No. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, when when when, uh, when uh, Elmer shot the thing that I wrote, uh, the movie, he wishes he had a casting director. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, was that, no problem. That's I, I had it. It's called Mama Knows Best, right? It's on Amazon, <clears throat> but I don't talk about it because of a few things. It was an experimental film. It was a it was a one woman play that I had. I turned into a film, cool. and also. <clears throat> the executive director casted the person and I told them you don't after we were done I'm like you see why you don't cast you know you leave that to the director to cast the roles and he's like I get it now because wow. he thought he thought he was going to have the whole weekend to himself and he had to work with the actress the actress the whole time oh god so, uh oh and now Dr. Kevin did you write the play or did yeah. you then oh okay cool very cool now, yeah it was the first of a trilogy so the first oh, nice. one was a one woman show and then the second part of it was her was her gay brother and his lover and there was only two people in the show and then the third part was this figure that was mentioned in both the first two who was celebrating her 100th birthday I'm oh, in wow. the deep south cool cool so wow. yeah so we did this but the 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 thing is I, I met the actress at an, at an acting workshop that I went to in L.A. Um, Tony, uh, Tony and Jean Bua acting for life. They did. Uh, they had an actor's workshop. They were okay. big, big soap opera stars for years. And then they had an actor's workshop. And I did some of their workshops. And I met this actress that we cast. And <laughs> we I, cast. I cast. <laughs> and but I but I looked at her and I said, you know, I'm gonna, I I I I like talked to her for 
a minute and a half, and I looked at her and just said, no one gets your range, no one gets what you're capable of, and I need to write you a show. And I got on a plane to fly back, and I wrote the whole, almost the whole thing sitting in uh, wow. the first draft sitting in there. It just flowed out. And so when it was time to do it, obviously, I was thinking this was her. But yeah. we didn't know that she didn't memorize lines. She had never not worked with a teleprompter. And you oh. can't do a one-woman show. So I was literally on the floor <sighs> holding her lines up so she could refer no. to them as we were doing. Yikes. <laughs> yes. And, yes. And, and not only that, he wrote this as a teenager. Oh. And she was like in her 40s. <laughs> Yes. Oh wow! So, so there was just so many things of like why I don't talk about this film. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> well, at but least every, she got to do her scenes. But but, but, every, you know but what's, everybody that did it said that because I had uh, a couple of different, uh, I had three different plot twists in it, and I had everybody mm -hmm. tell me they didn't see, they 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 didn't see any of the three plot twists coming. The, the best scene. Surprised. The best scene was the last scene that we, sh and it's the last scene we shot. But it was the last scene in the movie, I thought was her, her best performance and just the best. It felt it felt good. But um, oh, that's good. It, surprisingly, I didn't think this was going to go anywhere. This film, we didn't like submit it to any festivals or, or anything. But a distributor, no, a sales agent, contacted me wanting to to rep it. And oh, so nice. I was is it like, a, is it a feature or short? It, it's an hour long. Okay. It, it, we yeah, wanted it to be a short. But because it's because it's a one woman show, and we had to figure out how do we make this look like it's one long ass. It looks like one long ass, one hour cut mm, <laughs> is, mm -hmm. is uh, what we had to do, and okay. uh, um, it's um, so you know, and it it's we try to get it down because as you know, with with films, it's like if you're between the forty five minute and the one hour mark, you don't exist. Right, so yeah. we actually mm -hmm. were just short of an hour and we like extended the credits <laughs> to make sure oh. we were over the hour yeah. mark. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it, I would do it again. I think the content's good and you know, it's, it's, like I said, it's experimental because it's a one woman show. How do you film yeah. that? Um, yeah. But um, so when, when the sale agent came to me and I was like, I took the, the contract to my lawyer and, and she's like, you know, you're getting screwed on this. I was like, yeah. I says, but you know what? I really don't care. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, she's like, you'll never see any money from it. I'm like, I didn't think it was going to go anywhere but it's on the shelf anyway. So if they want to try to sell it, then more power to them. So. Right. One right. of the things totally. we did to, one of the things we did to make it go to an hour was at the last minute, it was like, we've got to do something at the end. So I wrote a song and we brought in, when one of the people that was working on the film sang the song I wrote, to bring it to the hour. Nice. <laughs> Smart. To close it down. It was like, yeah. So. And it's kind yeah. of a thriller. It's, it's, it, you know, it's a, it's a suspense thriller. I don't know what's the. Yeah. The, it's a the psychological genre. drama. Yeah, basically. Cool. So, you know, like I said, it's yeah. on Amazon if you want to check it out. Um, cool. Just don't judge me on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you can judge Never. the writing from me. Just ignore the act. <laughs> okay. So you want to do a remake. But I, I'd like to, I mean, you've got a pretty twisted mind. Why not an original? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that too. But, you know, I just love, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of, you know, such movies growing up. Nightmare on Elm Street, Scream, um, Halloween, you know, all these big, great, you know, classic franchises that I would totally, you know, love to take a stab at. Huh. Stab at um, <laughs> at one of them, you know, but totally original as well, you know, for sure. That would be great. Um, but yeah, I have ideas, you know, my own fan fiction for some of these things, so that could be kind of cool. But then I, of course, I know there's a lot of pressure, you know, with directors that then take on a new reboot or whatever, a new sequel, and now it's like there's such expectations. So, you know, I know. So it's let me crappy. let me ask you this question because I know we're almost out of time, but. So you're more slasher horror than you were not. You, you, you wouldn't be wanting to do something like an Alfred Hitchcock, which is more. I love both. Horror. Okay. Oh yeah, I love both. I'm not really like the films I've made are not really like bloody or anything. Like the first, like Sticks has some CGI blood. Um, family it's, history it's, has none. Twin it's more of a thr psychological thriller kind of. I guess it's yeah. It's more. I, it's more along the Hitchcock line than it is along the you know Saw line. It's it's yeah. It's like it's like a um 
you know, Hitchcock's great, but it's like maybe it's like a more modern Hitchcock where let's let's get a little bit more action, you know, like I love Psycho, but there's actually not a lot of scares. It's, you know, which is why it's so good. But uh, yeah, it's like a little bit of a scarier thriller, you know, especially family yeah. history. That's really some people are like, oh, this is just a straight up like dark, twisted drama. I'm like, sure, I'll take it. That's, that works. <laughs> yeah. You know. Hey, so what's the new one you're working on? So my new one, that is the fan film, and that's actually part of the Scream franchise. Because I love, I mean, when I saw that first movie, I was like, wow, I am watching myself on the screen, friends talking about scary movies. I mean, that like made me want to absolutely write and direct and yeah, and, and, and act. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. It's interesting because, you know, doing your, like, do, first of all, doing a fan film is just kind of making a film any or a podcast or whatever it's all kind of crazy because it's like you're literally going to put all your effort into something you have no idea if it's even going to be decent right and then now doing a fan film it's like it's not like i could make any money off i mean it's you you have no connection to the real franchise so it's even crazier but (laughs) i've had this idea for years so i'm just going to do it especially because the original film turns 25 years old this month i'll be talking about it on my podcast this month and then the new movie already comes out in January. So I'm like, I got to get my own little story and just put it on YouTube and just sort of, you know, get myself in there. So we'll see how that goes. It's set in an office. And then my next one is another office killer thing inspired by being a casting director. So that'll be interesting. So, yeah, I got some ideas lined up. I have a, a fun, well, I shouldn't say fun. It's actually one of the darkest things I've written is sort of a lover's lane. I think Elmer might have might have sent a script to you a long time ago when you were looking for the for short day. Yeah. For, for, for LGBTQ themed stuff. But that is a really dark, scary um, story about a, a young gay couple at lover's lane. Cause you know, we've always heard the stories of there's the straight couple at lover's lane. Well, what is, what is, what is it like if it's a gay couple sneaking out and, you know, wanting to make out in the car in the middle of nowhere and someone is terrorizing them for a reason more than just, Oh, I'm a scary person and I want to terrorize this couple. What if being gay is part of the motive, you know, for that killer to want to terrorize well, them? So we, kn- yeah. we know three things are true. Hmm. They're going to look better. They're going to be dressed better and they're going to scream better. So <laughs> yep. we know right off the bat that, you know. Done. Easy. Yep. Agreed. Mm hmm. <laughs> all right so we've gone over our time oh so uh, oh it's fine it's not like there's any executives you know telling us we're yeah only <laughs> cut um mm-hmm. but so our next show which is 12 12 uh mm-hmm. is roger mason is that someone from you rain no that's your guy <laughs> my guy i don't know any roger yeah. mason yes you do oh is this <laughs> is this the guy from the festival Yes. Oh, this is great. So this he has a podcast called You don't even know uh, who this is. You're like, oh great. <laughs> Sister Rogers Gaberhood. Right. Uh, now yeah, we're there. Yes, yeah. I just the name, you know, I just didn't get the name. So that should be a really fun show as well. Um and uh yeah, so let me just play us out. <laughs> <laughs> Born blonde. <laughs> Thanks for watching or listening to the Laughing, Loving, and Live show. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the show, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or support us with Buy Me A Coffee. To catch all of the latest from Laughing, Loving, and Alive, you can follow us on Instagram at Laughing, Loving, and Alive, and on Facebook at Laughing, Loving, and Alive. Thanks again, and see you next time. I love this. <laughs>